Now, a key part of the plan is that the aged care system will be means tested, which means many retirees will have to pay more for aged care from July next year. How do you think that element will be received? Um, look, people have universally told us that they want a, um, a well-funded, viable aged care system that is focused on meeting their care needs, uh, and that has to be high quality. Um, there has been means testing and income and assessment, uh, income and assets assessments already in place, but sometimes they haven't been applied equally right across the system and it hasn't been transparent. So some of that's in, in place now with what's being proposed. Uh, what's also important uh, is that care is still going to be funded by uh, the government, which we think is really important. On the other aspects, I think there will be mixed views. I think what's important is that people to know that there is a no worse off principle for those receiving aged care at the moment. There's also a, a lifetime cap, but there will be implications for some people for some of the things that they've paid for during their life uh, and contributing to those as well. Most of the people that we've spoken to over the last year have said to us that they're willing to pay more if they can see where the money is going and it's actually providing them high quality aged care services. So let's talk about the support at home package. So this is $4.3 billion for home support. How important is that part of the plan and is there anything that needs to happen in order for it to be effectively rolled out? Yeah, pretty much every single older person I've spoken to said they want to have the care in their home and want to stay in their home as long as possible. And the system that we have at the moment is quite fragmented. It's fragmented in the assessments system where there's a multiple assessments and there's delays in those assessments. There's also a long waiting time to access a home care package and, and gaps about where the Commonwealth Home Support Program is, is available. So this program called Support at Home, over the next few years, will reduce the waiting time. It will also mean that the care and services that are delivered are actually focused on the needs of older people and what they want and how they want their care delivered. That's what universally they tell us that they want. Uh, and now we'll, we'll, we'll need to build the workforce to support that as well. Yes, there have been major shortages in the aged care workforce. Firstly, how much has that affected the provision of services so far? And are you confident there'll be enough workers to effectively carry out this plan? Yeah, our, our um, services, our aged care advocates who are there to provide independent support to older people. Um, and we had uh, 44,000 cases last year of people coming to us looking for support. Huge amounts of those, 46% was about uh, home care packages and also about availability and accessing those packages. So we do need to plan for the future. We need a, a sustainable uh, workforce in the community and we need a sustainable aged care workforce in residential aged care. They need to be well trained, they need to be paid well and there has been increases in the wages of the aged care workers and we are seeing people attracted to the to the to um, what's a really valuable uh, care economy but we need to keep having a plan particularly in rural and regional areas, to make sure this, this, this happens. And just finally, before we have to go, is there anything that is not included in the plan that you had been hoping to see? Look, we're looking to make sure that the rights of older people can be upheld and that people can raise their voice. Um, we're still unpacking some of that detail. We're also unpacking about what this means for... I suppose different members of the community are making sure that this is equitable and that the expectations on older people are transparent and known. There is a lot of detail to look at. Thank you for your time. That is Craig Gear from the Older Persons Advocacy Network.